reading today, it says the, the, uh, the Yaakov, it says the I said yesterday. father was Abraham. If you have your grandfather's house, and you can say the truth, you don't say the truth today. A father is called a grandfather, no designated to. But why wouldn't they call Yitzhak the father also? That's right. He was, well, because well, he, well, was, well, he was explaining that you're part of a lineage. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to start with the learning sponsors. A year of learning, many friends of Stephen Vigdor, Lezek and Nishmat, and Kamelech, and Meir Halevi. Friends of Marcy Kurtz, in memory of her great niece, Leia Bracha. Isaac and Evelyn Blachor, in memory of his sister, Chaya Rachel Bas Isser. Friends of Leonie Meiselman, Leia Sabra Bas Chanoch Zunder. Excuse me. Month of learning, Charlie Gelfenstein, in memory. Two months of learning by friends of Milton Miller in honor of his second bar mitzvah. A month of learning by Charlie Gelfenstein in memory of his mother, Dasya Gittelbus Meir Halevi, and his father, Mayor Ben Yaakov. Chaim and Phyllis Reese in memory of his father, Mordechai Ben Yom Tov Lippa. Isaac and Evelyn Blacho in memory of his mother, Zisselbus Chaim Yitzchak. A week of learning by Shoshana Berger in memory of her father, Tzvi Ben Shraga Dov HaKohen, uh, Susan Fuchter Kramer, in memory of her father, Moshe Ben Yechiel Mechel. Okay, if uh, today is not the 31st of today November, <laughs> okay, but there is need, nor is there any days of learning marked for December 1st. So, okay. so, so there is, so all we can say is, when Hashem is having Aliyah, Krank Rafiel, Dabi Yashir, Hashem Atliyah, and the Chobon Israel, good good bench. Amen. Okay. All right. Okay. Five lines from the bottom. Well, that's a good place. Maybe I'll start there. Okay. Uh, the uh, Mishnah. Yes. We are on Lamed Vav Ahmed Beis. Five lines from the bottom where the new quotation from the Mishnah is beginning, where it, it says specifically, Milamdo Midrash Halachot Va'agadot Aval O Yilamdenu Mikra. Okay, that's the place where we're going to pick up. Okay, so basically, Mara is going to want to raise an appropriate question. What's so unique about the situation that you say you can teach one Torah Shabbat Peh, but not Torah Shabbat Okay. All right, that's the case, right? That's where we're picking up. And as we go into the uh, Gemara, we'll have a couple of interesting side issues too. Okay, all right. So what happens? So Gemara <laughs> starts off, right? Mikra mai tama lo yilamdenu. Why dafka? Are we saying that he cannot teach him Torah? Okay. Up to now, by the way, remember our assumption was that you would pay a tutor to teach you Torah. And if the person, if there was a neder not to benefit from the person, okay, the implication would be, right, if you don't have to pay, that's a benefit to you. On the other hand, we need to keep in mind that we do not do mitzvot for benefit, but we are commanded to learn Torah. And so maybe we might argue, okay, that's right. Maybe we might raise the argument that if we're commanded to learn Torah, why should there be any prohibition in this situation of learning Torah from the person, okay? Because then I'm not, if I don't have a benefit from learning Torah, it's a mitzvah, then what's the issue? Okay, so I'm looking, so now I'm we understand. That if I had done that, you would have said you're jumping in. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the issue. So that's the essence of what the Gemara is asking behind the question, I would suggest. 
right? Basically, mikra maitama lo yilam demi. Mishum de kemahani le. Immediately, the Gemara answers because he's you're benefiting him. He's gaining benefit from that Torah study. That would seem to be the case if he doesn't have to pay that's, the tutor. That's, that's, but the learning of Torah is a mitzvah. That's what we're going to see exactly, Bob. Right. So either depending the way the netter works either not having to pay, so you're keeping the money, or getting the money, it, it's a benefit. Okay, so the question is, isn't there some benefit involved the in someone, for someone, either right. the learner or the teacher? And if you've made a netter not to benefit, the, the person well, not to benefit that? from X as the teacher, or, or the teacher not to benefit from why, who is the learner? Right. There's the problem. So the Gemara continues. Midrash nami kamahanile. But isn't there also a benefit learning Torah Shabbat peh? Isn't that the case? Amar Shmuel. So some, Shmuel. Some people get paid for teaching. Well, I, I, I'm not going that far yet. Okay, we'll get to that because we don't want to rush ahead. Okay. <laughs> Amar Shmuel says Shmuel, but Makom shenot lin sachar al hamikra ve'enot lin sachar al hamidrash. We're talking about a location where people receive compensation for teaching Bible, but they do not receive compensation for teaching Torah Shabbat. Okay. Now, what kind of situation might we think of in that regard? Let's see what the Gemara tells us. Okay. Pascha. My, my, my Pascha. So what's the difference? Okay. What's the differences? Okay. As we get to Lamed Zion now, the top of our new armor. HaKamashmalan, it comes to teach us. Da'afilu b'makom shenotlin sachar al hamikra shari l'mishkal. Comes to teach us that even in a place where we do provide compensation, okay, for those that uh, teach uh, Torah Shabbatav, okay, that there it's permitted to receive the compensation. Whereas Al Hamidrash Lo Shari Lamishkal, whereas for Torah Shabbat Peh, it's not appropriate to receive any compensation. That's why the I would hope not. Okay. All right. So the Gemara asks, my Shana Midrash Delo? What's the reason then that people don't or should not be able, let's put it that way, to receive compensation for teaching short Torah Shabbat Peh? Dichtiv. Why? Because it's written in the Torah text, the following. And then we were quoting Moshe Rabbeinu here. Because I have been commanded by Hashem to teach you, and therefore the implication being by being commanded by Hashem, Moshe did not receive any compensation. And so therefore, similarly, somebody else teaching should not be, be receiving compensation. Uchtiv, and following that, it also says, hashem. See, I have taught you laws and let's call it uh, Regulation. judgment, regulations, judgments, as commanded by Hashem. So since we have two different psukim, one might refer to Torah, and one might refer to Midrash, etc. Okay? Right, but however, as we go on, ma'ani b'chinam, says Moshe Rabbeinu, the same way I don't get any salary, okay, right? Af atem nami b'chinam, so you likewise, you are going to do it for free, without payment. Now, so the Gemara asks here and makes a statement, mikra nami b'chinam, do we say then that teaching Torah, okay, all right? Do we say that therefore teaching Torah Shabbatav should also be done without compensation? Rav Amar, says Rav 
his view, Sakhar Shimur. No, what the teacher is being paid is for safeguarding the welfare of this. I wouldn't put it that far. Well, they're going to ask okay. you First, to yes, it, so. safeguard the students. In other words, you want to make sure the students stay in class, they're attentive, they don't go wandering off, things like that. They don't go out and play basketball when they should be in shiur, little things like that, okay? However, Rabbi Yochanan gives a different rationale. What does he say? Sechar pisuk ta'amim. No, the teacher gets paid for a different reason, namely for the proficiency of learning the punctuation through the cantillation of the psuki. Okay? And I will just tell you that there are places in Eretz Yisrael today where they still teach Chumash in that manner. Like where most places. The Reishi. No, but I'm saying I know of places that Chassidish world, that's what they do. They right. still do it. Okay. Chassidish world. Yeah. It wasn't, isn't just Hasidish world, it's good places. Okay, so it's not. So we have two different reasons, basically. One that one safeguards, watches the kids, make sure they learn, behave, etc. The other is because there is a certain level of uh, expertise. I'll use that word for the moment that's necessary to be able to teach the trope and understand that in learning the trope, you're not just learning it as a matter of uh, singing, but you're learning it as a matter of grammar and learning it as a matter of, which is what Mel is gonna teach us all eventually. Right, Mel? Okay. Yeah, okay. In terms of understanding the format of a pasuk, how the plastic is, is structured, okay? Tnan, and now we have a new text. Lo yilam denu mikra, that it says our Mishnah taught that you cannot teach him Torah shebichtav. Bishleim elaman amar sechar pisuk ta'amim. That's understandable regarding Rabbi Yochanan who said that it's for the cantillation proficiency. Hainu the lo yilam dena. And therefore, that's why we say he cannot teach that person who has a netter not to benefit from him. Okay? Ele laman da amar schar shimor. But according to Rabbi Rav, who said that it was for safeguarding the students, right? Gadol bar shimorhu. Okay. Do we say that uh, Adults need babies. older students, okay, all right, need uh, such uh, safeguarding? Okay, is that the case? The Katan Katani says the Gemara. No, we're talking particularly about a situation where the person is teaching minor age children. Okay, but if you're going to argue that that rationale of Rav is for minors, okay? What about the fact, Ema Seifa? I would say, look at the later part of our Mishnah, where it says, Aval Milamed et Banav Mikra, where it says that he can teach the children, teach the children of that person who was no dare against him, teach that, that fellow's children, Torah, Shabbatav, Katan Barbanim, who? Are we talking about a minor male who is able to give birth to children? Not quite, okay? But rather, what happens? Chasuri katani. Something is missing in our Mishnah, and we have to teach it in the following manner. Lo yilamdenu mikra bekatan. When we say that he cannot teach him, teach Torah, okay? What are we talking about? the situation regarding a minor. It's the vowi or the, the vower is a minor. Is right. The im haya gadol. But if the vower or vowi, okay, is an adult, milamdel lo ulavanav mikra. You may teach not only him, but also his children, Torah shebichta. Okay. In that situation, because the tutor 
Okay. Uh, and because the Golo, the, the, the one who's making the vow is a Golo and doesn't need Shimur. Well, well wait a second. Shad, you're right. But that two to waves a fee and the vower therefore questionably benefits. So that's why we still have a problem. Okay. So that's where we have a Macy Vey. That's why we have a challenge if you right. say that the vower and his children can learn from the person. So what's the challenge? Tina Kot. Lo korin b'tchila b'shavah, that we clearly say that the, the, when it's regarding to the children, okay, they cannot read, uh, learn a new material on Shabbos. Okay, in other words, implying they can review what they learned. Okay, yes, yeah, what I'm going to get to. Eleshonin barishon, but rather they can review what they learned something at least once previously bishlam the first review of shabbos from indonesia okay well okay i just translated by art school that's all bishlam lamanda amar schar pisuk ta'amim that's understandable again by rabbi yochanan who said that any compensation comes for teaching the proficiency of cantillation hainu that's the reason we might say that one does not learn or read new material on Shabbos because it's a tircha. It's difficult. Okay, that might be. It's exceedingly long. Okay, and therefore we're going to see the Gemara is going to raise another issue with regards to that shortly. But according to the one, namely Rav, who argued that compensation was for safeguarding the students, Amai ain't Kareem betchila b'shabbat. Why then do we use the rationale and argue that you cannot learn new material on Shabbos? Okay. Va'amai shonim b'rishon. And furthermore, why do we say it's only acceptable to review items you learned at least once previously? In that case, too. But here, even regards to Shabbos, you also have another problem of he's getting paid for doing work on Shabbos by safeguarding the children. And it's very clear that it's prohibited to employ anyone on Shabbos. And according to your line of reasoning, Sachar pisuk b'shabbat mi asir. According to that reasoning, do you say that proficiency in cantillation, learning that on Shabbos is forbidden? Havla ahi. Maybe I what I would do is uh, combine it, assimilate it Over into uh, other uh, a, to the, to the a different the pay period. A, a different pay. a different pay period. Okay. Do it that way. Vahavla'a mishrashari. And folding it in, assimilating it into a larger sum, in that case, is permitted. Titania, because we have a bright that teaches. Hasocheret ha'po'el l'shmoret ha'tinok. One who hires a worker, a babysitter, to safeguard the child. Okay? L'shmoret ha'para or to safeguard or watch his animal, in this case his cow, might be a para aduma in particular, that one would be concerned about, right? Lishmur et hazra'im, or to watch over the shoots, the plants, newly because growing. newly items, because we're concerned here particularly for Omer, that might be the case. We do not pay them a salary for Shabbos, right? What do we do? We are hava'a, we are rolling it in. Lefichach, says the Gemara, as we go to the next Amud, im avdo, if that's the case, were they to lose, let's say, that animal, or the animal got lost, okay, or whatever, eino chayav ba'achuyutan. He is considered a shomer chinam, and therefore, he's not responsible. Okay, 
But if you were to pay him, say, by the week, Sachir Chodesh, pay him by the month. Sachir <clears throat> Shana, pay him by the year. Sachir Shavua, pay him by a seven year period. Notem lo Sachar Shabbat. Then you can roll it in and include in it a salary for whatever he needed to do for Shabbos as well. Lefichach, therefore, im avdo, if the animal got lost or the produce or whatever, chayav ba'achriyutan, yes. because in that case he would be considered a shomer sachar and therefore would have responsibility regarding a lost object, right? Okay, we go on now. Ella, rather, says the Gemara, I don't like that earlier explanation, so I'll try another one. Rather, Gabe Shabbat, in regards to the question of not learning new material on Shabbos, let's give an alternative answer. Hainu Tama, the Ein Korin Betchila. This is a possible reason that one doesn't learn new material on Shabbos. Mishum. Because why it allows fathers to have the free time with their children. Father will sit in on the class and be with the kids. I'm not sure of that. Okay, in order to observe other mitzvahs of Shabbos. Okay, to observe Shabbos in general with the children, whether it's learning with them or other things. Okay. And if you want, I might say it as follows. Why? Because on Shabbos, the family tends to eat and drink together. In other words, they have, they have, they have a, an extended Shabbos meal. Okay, more than what they would normally happen during the week. Okay. Okay. Okay, and the others might say the world lies heavy upon them. In other words, because of the large meal, they're lethargic. That's another explanation. Kid Amar Shmuel, as Shmuel has often said mm -hmm. at other times, and she knew Veset Chilat Chole Me'ayim, that a major change in one's diet is going to cause. <coughs> extreme stress stomach. in one's uh, intestines, okay? Stomach problems, right? Okay. Yes, time, uh, schedule. Right. Right. right, generally, right? Okay, so what happens? It could be timing, it could be the contents of the diet, it's a combination of change in schedule. Well, well but it's- More food. But it's also the, the contents of the, it's both, okay? Ulaman da'aman. So now we go back to what we said before. In other words, not to be stressed with school on Shabbos. Ulaman okay? Amar, but according to the one who was Rav, who said, I'm sorry, that was Rabbi Yochanan, who said the compensation is Pisuk Ta'amim, the uh, proficiency in cantillation. What's the reason that he, why didn't he give the reason? The other reason that Rav gave of safeguarding the children. Kasavar banot mika ba'inyon shimur. Are we talking about here when we talk about minors? What about minor girls? Are we talking about the fact that uh, they need safeguarding? Okay, the implication being that the girls are safeguarded at home. And the okay. girls are going to stick around. They're not. They're not rambunctious like little well girls. that could be another rationale little having little had little sons little. you're telling us yeah. something okay little. what's happened ulaman da amar sakhar shimur but according to the one namely rabbi yochanan who said payment is for uh, child uh, care mai tama lo amar sakhar pisuk ta'amim what's the reason that he did not give the answer of compensation for proficiency, teaching and cantillation. Kasava, because he was of the perspective, Sakhar Pisuk, 
Ta'amim da'oraita. Just with stars like that. Okay. No, kasavar sachar pisuk. Ta'amim da'oraita. I don't have it in parentheses in my Gemara. Okay. Okay. All right. Pisuk ta'amim da'oraita. Because he's of the un understanding and of the opinion that the, the uh, passing on of the method of cantillation was given Torah at it's Sinai. Okay? And that's, and that's the point. And not a rabbinic situation. Da Amar Rav Ika Bar Avin, Amar Rav Hananel, Amar Rav, says Rav Ika. Son of Avin in the name of Rav Hananel in the name of Rav. My dichtiv, wasn't it not written? Vayikra'u b'sefer Torah halogim mefurash v'shum seichel v'yavinu b'mikra. Okay, citing here in Nehemia chapter 8 where they talk about the Torah reading there. Okay. Namely, that one read in the Sefer Torah given by Hashem, and they read those who were mefurash, it was very clear. And from their own understanding, they were able to perceive the text. Vayikra'u b'sefer Torah alokim, zemikra. That tells us yes. that in that situation, they read the Torah specifically, shebikta. Mefurash, when it says clear, zetargum. Namely, that there were others there along with Ezra who explained the Torah to them in the Aramaic. Okay? Vesom Sechem, that they were able to understand it. Elu Hapsukim, this was the clearly the uh, how the verses were structured. Okay? Viavinu Bamikra, Zepisuk, Tamim. Okay, and the fact that they understood it meant that it was the traditional spelling of how things were. Va'amrela, and others say, Ela Hamaso wrote. Those were the embellishments, okay? The tagim and things like that. Ama Rabbi Yitzchak. Mikra, says Rabbi Yitzchak, however, Mikra, Sofrim. The reading of the method of reading the Torah was done by the Sofrim. Ve'itur, okay, in those em embellishments, those are different things. Sofrim were again determined by the Sofrim. Ve'kiryan, lo k'tivan, okay? K'tivan, lo kiryan, and also done by the Sofrim, where the notes, I'm going to put, use that word in quotes, notes, right? that says where something is written, but not uh, written, said, said, but not written, mm -hmm. and elsewhere where it's written, but not recited and not said. So that's the Cray and Kativ. Well, it's even more because there were words. Because there are words that were written. Well, we're going to get to And it was going to get Right, we're going to get to that. Halakha la Moshe mi Sinai. And that it goes back to Moshe. You will get that. Right? Says that now. Okay. So now from so now we're going to get to basically, and I'm not going to go through it in the detail that Art Scroll does, but Art Scroll gives you cites the entire psukim in its commentary, where it says this is the case, this is the pasuk, this is so on and so forth. So Art Scroll gives that detail in each of those psukim. Okay, what happens? Mikra sofrim. What's the what's an example? Okay, of mikra of right being done by the sofrim. Aretz. Well, eretz my. Okay, so you have well eretz aretz shamayim shamayim mitzrayim mitzrayim mitzrim mitzrim. Okay, so you have words where it's very specific. Mitzrayim mitzrayim. Okay, so you have words that could be written very similarly, okay, but they're read different, right? Etur sofrim, what about the example of the embellishments? Achar ta'avoru, okay, 
אחר תלך, אחר תאסוף, קדמו שערים, אחר נוגעים, צדקסך כהררי כאלה. אוקיי? So these are examples again, where we have those kinds of situations. Okay, now we get to another case where we said that they are read but not written. Okay, so these are examples where clearly it's as if you have to read in a word to the text of the Torah, right? Prat, in that case, right? Debelechto. That's one example. Ish the ka'asher yishal ish b'davar ha'elohim ba'i. That's another case. The nivneta la deplita. Again, another example. Et the hagar hugar. Again, when hagar was uh, exile, right? When we've had recently. Eli the hagaran, eli the hasori halim. So those are other examples. Okay. Now we get to the next case, Kiri'an Velo Kadvan. Examples where the word is written, but we don't read it that way. Vikadvan Velo Karyan, or that it's written, but we it's don't. not read. Not, not read. And we'll just go over a tiny bit. Na Deselach, right? Zot. The mitzvah, the daruch, the hadorech, chamesh, the paat negev, im the chi goel, halech ketvin, velo kirya. So, in all of those examples, he uses those cases to show that uh, that's the possibility. Um, I just want to finish up today by telling you that uh, Dr. Moshe Sokolo from uh, why you uh, gave on uh, a, a shear, a long shear on Torah in motion, if you're ever interested, on the development of the text of the, of the Chumash and the Tanakh uh, from a traditional point of view, of course. And he goes, cites examples from Baba Basra and other cases, okay, on the so if anybody is interested in following this kind of information on their own, that would be a, a very respectable and worthwhile uh, something to source to learn on, on your own. Uh, I listened to about half of it. I didn't get to finish it, but I found it very interesting how he presented, not only does he deal with uh, text, but he deals with questions of, of uh, Moshe Rabbeinu's role as, uh, and we're not going to go into that today, okay, in terms of other involvement. Okay. Uh, what? Any unwilling tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. All right, everybody have a good day. Stay well, everybody. Right. For me, you too. Uh-huh. You got, uh, I know I left you with a long um, with Stick me with the tough stuff. No, no, I don't know if it's tough. It's okay. I haven't prepared it yet. Okay. Even if I'm not uh, giving the shear, I still prepare. So then you have to interrupt. No, I don't that's have to interrupt. That's the role of the pre preparer. No, that's the role of the tosophone. <laughs> <laughs>